What you wish to the black or black is? Yeah. <laughs> All right, are we on? We're not. Hello? Hello? Are we on? All right, good morning. We're going to get started with class because I know you're ready to, to head out to, to eat a little bit of lunch. Uh, this could be a, an interesting study, but before we do that, I have a, a very important announcement to make. Uh, Frida Blackman just found out a, a, just before they headed up here for worship this morning that her mother, Juanita Davis Hawkins, passed away this morning. And so um, she's struggled with Alzheimer's and she's had health issues the last several years. Uh, they live over in Seminole and they don't have any more information at this time regarding services or anything like that. But if you just be in prayer for um, Frida and, and her family, she's, uh, she's got a brother who lives in Austin area. And so uh, I'm sure they're going to be traveling. But but just be in, in prayer for, for them. Uh, and so let's just, let's start off with a, a time of prayer, lifting them up. Lord, I just, I love Lynn uh, and Frida so, so much. And, and I know this is a difficult time for them. And so Lord, I just pray that you'll, you'll give them comfort and give them peace. Please be with the family as they're mourning the loss uh, of a, a special woman. And as, as they'll be traveling uh, here the next few days and just I pray that you give them peace and comfort them in this time uh, Lord please just remind us that all around us is a heartache uh, and grief and loss uh, and so Lord I just I pray that as as your hands and your feet that we will we will recognize that and, and we will serve others that will hold them up that we will comfort them uh, that, that will reach out and, and in doing so uh, let them see that there's a, a God who, who loves them even in, in their difficult times. It's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Um, I'm going to uh, spend some time uh, introducing what we're going to be doing on Wednesday nights. Um, and I'm definitely speaking out of uh, beyond my area of, of expertise and knowledge. Uh, but I think it's something that might be interesting to you. It's it is interesting to me. It's just not something that I'm. Uh, it's not something that that God created me um, to um, to be good at or to um, to be um, as knowledgeable as some of you are. Uh, and so, what I want to talk about uh, starting this morning, I'm introducing what we'll be doing on Wednesday nights. Is we're going to talk about music. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, songs. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, what it looks like in the Bible um, and what it's like in our lives. And in a minute, I'll tell you 
what really prompted this whole study. But for just a minute, I want us to think about just just the, the idea of music. And I want you to tell me whether you meet, you want to talk about economically or globally, like how, how does music impact either your life specifically or our lives as people? Give me some examples. What, how, how is music an important part of life? Especially for you audiophiles. I know Bob is one of those. What's a source of comfort? Okay, it can be a source of comfort. Music celebration. It's a, a music of celebration. This does anybody have like a favorite song when it comes on the radio? They start jamming. Any of you um, dashboard drummers? <laughs> Y'all are dashboard drummers when you're going down the road. Tim, I just can almost I don't know like I just wonder like. Do you play the air guitar when it comes on? Do you drum on the dash? Do you have a ukulele? I know there's a mini ukulele, an imaginary ukulele that you play when your favorite song comes on. You're just jamming going down the road, right? I mean, it, it, it does. Music inspires. Music comforts. Uh, music, and this is a place we're going to get to in a few minutes, but one thing music really does is it teaches Okay, and we could talk about that in a very like a, a, a literal sense in the fact that now how many times have we learned something because it was put to music? Uh, in fact, for me, um, especially when you talk about the New Testament, when I was younger, I didn't learn a, a good song for the Old Testament books. But when it came to the New Testament books, I can remember the song that we sang and for years. As if somebody said, tell me the books of the New Testament, I would have to sing the song. When I was a kid growing up, Matthew, Lord, you can John, that's a letter to the Romans. Y'all know that song, right? That's your, that was my jam. Like when I was in third grade and I wanted to get my, my little gold star for knowing the, the books of the New Testament, I had to sing that song. But, but even beyond that, um, it not only, we not only learn, it, it really informs us. Uh, so I remember this. This is just one of those embarrassing moments that I've never shared with anybody, but it's not super embarrassed, but it is really funny. Um, I was I was a teenager. I was in a, 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 a Bible class and bless his heart, one of, the, one of the teachers was trying to teach a group of rowdy, obnoxious boys of which I was like the most rowdy and the most obnoxious. Believe it or not, I've actually like tempered down over the years. Yeah. Hard to believe. But at some time, I was even more ADD and crazy and spastic than I am now. Uh, and I can remember one time he was like, okay, let's talk about what's the definition of love? What is love? And I kid you not, I said, it's only love if the love is returned. Some fools never learn. <laughs> Does anybody remember that song? Yeah. Some fools never learn. Play with the. F I'm not going any further than that. I was convinced. Like I thought that was a good definition of what love is. And the guy looked at me and he was like, "I don't know what to do with this. Like, what are you talking like?" And it was like I I was I decided that because it had been put into lyrics and placed uh, with with a melody that 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 had to be true. But if you think about it. A lot of what we believe is formed by the music that we hear and the songs that we sing. Okay, this is not, I mean, this is not something that we've cornered the market on. Now, we've always been really good with the acapella music, but music in general has been something that has been enjoyed by and used by the world for since the very beginning. Right, and it has only grown. You talk about the music industry, I mean, any part of it. You talk about how many billions of dollars are spent on, I used to would say cassettes and CDs, but now you can't even find a CD player. Downloaded music, uh, at the concerts that people go to, the fact that, that songs are added every day. I, I believe that is Spotify, that's, the, that's one of the, um, apps that you can go to, a platform that you can go and listen to songs. It's really interesting. Every day, there, I think, I think if I remember the number, it was there were 70, 
thousand songs added to Spotify every day. If you wanted to listen to the, the new songs added to this software platform that, that puts out music for people every day, it would take you over a year of listening to be able to listen to every song that's added in just one day. Now let's talk a little bit about this. And I'm, I'm not afraid to talk about this because I am manly branded. I can talk about this. I love musicals. I don't have a problem with musicals. I can be very manly and say that some of the most heartfelt moments that I've, I've, I've witnessed as far as like watching something has been a musical. I, if you've been around here for more than a few months, you know that my my favorite movie is a musical, Les Mis. Because I love when Jean Valjean walks out and he's wrestling with this, what do I do? Do I go back to my life of crime or do I start a new life? And and there he's, he's singing the song and you remember this one of the opening scenes uh, and he tears up this piece of paper that says he's a criminal. He's like, I'm going to start a whole new life over again. And just to, to hear him sing that, is just so powerful. And, and that, that movie just talks about, about forgiveness. But like, what would that have been like if Jean Valjean and Javert, if they hadn't sung? Now, some of you have been like, it would have been a lot better movie. But, I mean, to me, it was so powerful. I mean, there's a, a whole industry, not only around music, there's an industry around musical instruments. Uh, you even think about movies. Uh, and how much effort they put in um, to hiring people who will who will uh, present uh, these scores. And if you ever think about that as you're watching uh, a movie, think about how the how the music playing in the background can can completely change uh, what what that scene is all about. In fact, how many of you um, know what's about to happen in a movie when you hear that score starting up, that music start to play. I mean, just think of Jaws. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. When you hear the da-da, da-da, the big scary shark is about to show up and he's going to eat a person or a boat or, you know, a whole group of them, right? And so music really informs us. Um, just um, last week, uh, Jennifer was tasked with providing a a uh, a walk up or a walkout song. How many of you know what a walkout song is? Okay, if you've watched baseball, maybe you're a friend, a fan of pro wrestling. I'm not judging, I'm not judging, but they have those walkout songs. And so uh, Jennifer was asked by her principal. She's uh, asked all the teachers, "What would your what would your walkout song be?" And Jennifer did a really, Jennifer and I did a really long stroll down memory lane as we looked through a bunch of songs from the 90s to come up with uh, what her favorite walkout song was. And we actually toyed with the idea of, of her, her walkout song being Dolly Parton working nine to five. <laughs> uh, uh, or what was the other one about um, I, uh, Friday, I'm in love. <laughs> Monday, it doesn't matter, not Tuesday, but Friday, I'm in love. But, um, so, you know, songs really um, are a big part of our lives. Um, I, I can't sing, I can't play an instrument, but I absolutely love music. Uh, and there have been more than a handful of times where, where a song has, has really been, been very moving to me. Um, a song that we're going to look uh, at several Wednesday nights uh, from now um, it's one of my earliest memories of, of being in church. Uh, and I couldn't have been, I don't even think in elementary at the time. I might have been five or six years old. And I remember we were sitting in church and I looked over and my mom is just weeping. And I thought, well, something's really wrong. And then she, she got up and she walked out. And I, I, I turned to my dad and said, Dad, what's wrong? Is mom okay? And he said, she's fine. She was just, she was really emotional about a song that, that we uh, had sung, that we were singing at that time. And that song was 10,000 Angels. And what an emotional song that is. And that was a song at that time that really kind of pricked her heart and reminded her of, 
of what Jesus could have done and what he didn't do. Um, I know Sarah is a runner, and I've never quizzed you about this, but one thing I like to do when I run is I like to sing. Um, and if you think my singing is bad when I'm just standing here, you should hear me when, like, I'm out of breath. Uh, and I have several songs. One of them we're going to look at later on is Step by Step. I love that song. But when I sing while I run, um, I'm old and I get winded easily. And so I have to sing to the kind of the cadence of my breath. Right. And so I, I don't know if you've done that before. You love Rocky. And just so the next time I see you, if you're running up steps with a hoodie on, I will, yeah, you got that. You got the eye of the tiger on. Um, when they just I, I think I'm just kind of wasting your time because you're like, I know this already. But but music really inspires us. It comforts us. Um, it entertains us. Uh, but even even more than that, it really directs our our theology. Music is so powerful. You can say something and you can hear something, but when you put it to music, it just changes everything. Movies are changed with scores. Commercials are more compelling, catchy, and sometimes even obnoxious when you hear that jingle and you can't get it out of your head. Um, I, I thought about uh, starting off a, a bunch of different songs and having you finish. Um, but can anybody tell me uh, what's on a, the, the, is it the Big Mac? Two all, all beef patties with lettuce sauce pickles, onions. On a sesame seed. Two all, all beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Yep. Right? How many, I mean, besides Jack, who would know what goes on? A hamburger, unless you've heard that song. I'm not sure about that hamburger. Unless you, maybe, maybe you're like um, uh, Eddie and you don't like beans and cheese and your your food palate needs to be adjusted. I do have, from my background, my mom, she was listening to the Green Room Radio Show and it brought played to you. And she did that for so many years. She ended up actually listening to the song writing it down the words because it meant so much to her. Okay. Hey, can you all remember doing that, uh, John? I was going to say, some of the preachers in today used to do it a lot. Or what? The Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Some of the people so, you know, the country western songs of Terry McCreary and all those kinds of Sure, um, they they a absolutely do, and and I have I have turned into the old fuddy duddy generation that I thought was old and fuddy duddy when I was a kid because I listened to a lot of music and well I just tell you I mean I didn't listen to good music like it was it wasn't wholesome or healthy I listened to Def Leppard and Guns and Roses and Metallica and then it got worse then I got into country music and they were talking about you know putting Earl in the back of the trunk, yeah. right? Um, and so um, I, I have conversations with, with teens today, and I'm like, hey, look, look I know where you are. Like, I, I've listened to that kind of music, but I just want you to know, like, as you put that stuff into your ears, like, whether you believe it or not, it transforms you, right? Whether good or bad. And, and I'm not doing this because... Um, you know, when, when we were growing up, we didn't have necessarily, we didn't have the um, availability of good Christian music like we do today. Okay, and I'm not trying to disparage, um, you know, uh, Michael W. Smith and some of those others. I mean, it was, they had a very specific genre and it was very limited. I'm going to tell you something, and we're going to play this song at some point, and it's probably going to make a lot of you mad. But it's one of the songs that, that really kind of changed my love for Christian music. Um, it's by a group named DC Talk. You've probably never heard them before. Brett probably has. They, they're they a, a little bit harder. They put out a song called, does anybody know the name? Jesus Freak. It's a really unusual song. But for a teenager, 
who did not gravitate towards the, um, I can't remember her name, it'll come to me in a, a minute, but uh, Michael W. Smith, I, that kind of soft 80s music, when that really did kind of uh, really, I, did, I wasn't geared towards that, I heard Jesus Freak and I'm like, okay, like, and then I listened to the words of it and they are crazy. And I thought, you know what, I think I could, I could buy into this. Um, now I'm, I'm weird. I, I have a Christian playlist that is on my phone and that's what I listen to. If I'm not listening to that, it's either KLTY, oh, no, I'm sorry, um, K-Love. I get confused because when I was in Arlington growing up, K-Love was the oldie stations and it would be, I K-Love my oldies. Um, that's what my dad would listen to with the Beach Boys and all that and so, um, but I, that's what I've chosen to listen to. I think I did. And, and y'all wish you could. I still got 18 minutes left. Um, but, but music can really transform and change. And, and I believe, and this is biblical, that, that what you put in through your ears and your eyes ultimately is going to affect your heart. And boy, there are, there are some times when, when I go to the gym and I, would, I wouldn't mind listening to some Def Leppard and get that loud banging music. But at the end of the day, I, I have to be very careful how I guard my heart. And some of you um, are much more mature and you can handle those things better. Me, I just, I don't want to have any of that. Uh, and so it's really hard. I, I had a, a teacher when I was in uh, junior high. This is another true story that you actually haven't heard before, and then we'll jump in, but it, it really goes along with what we've been talking about. Um, she, she was really into Christian music in a time where there wasn't a whole lot of it. And it, musically, I didn't think it was just stellar. Um, uh, and I said, I listened to, I listened to um, country music at that time I was, and, and she says, I, I think she said, I'll give you $100 if you can list 100 songs that you listen to on the radio that are good, wholesome songs. Out of my mouth, before I could even think, this is as a junior high kid, remember, but as a junior high kid, I said, oh, Garth Brooks, like friends in low places. <laughs> and she's like, I, um, she goes, I don't know that song very well. Why don't you... Why don't you like print off the lyrics and and like and then I'll look at them. And I print off those lyrics. Even as a junior high kid, I was like, I don't think it's talking about what I thought it was talking about. <laughs> yes. The nineties didn't have music. There you go. You know what? I grew up listening to the Beach Boys and and the Carpenters. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, the Carpenters. My dad loves the Carpenters and the Beach Boys. I listen to that. So no, no, don't, don't, don't put the Carpenters. Do what? Jimmy Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Um, so there's a lot of different music out there, right? And so I, while I, while I, well, this is not going to be about of which which songs are appropriate and not appropriate. What I really want to do through this study, what I'm really excited about is I want to go through and, and we were, we're going to pick some, some hymns, some songs from the songbook that, that we've sung before. And I want us to just actually kind of dissect them. I want us to, I want us to hear them, to sing it, and then read along and say, okay, what is that really saying? Can I buy into that? And what does the Bible say about this? And my dear friend, Scotty Holloman, has a song that it, when it gets led, like he kind of, I think he might even twitch a little bit when he hears the song. And he shared this with you, so I feel comfortable sharing with it. The song that Scotty Holloman does not like is, does anybody remember? A Mansion Over the Hilltop. A Mansion Over the Hilltop. Um, and you start to think about that and you think, yeah, theologically, 
it's missing a few things, especially if you think that that mansion is for you and you alone. <laughs> uh, if there is a mansion, it's one that you share with a bunch of other people. So you might as well just call it, you know, um, I don't want to say a dorm, but it is not a, a, a place that you can go to get away from everybody. Right. And so there are some songs that we sing that theologically are sharing a message that maybe aren't that great. Um, a song um, that that I really struggle with that's on the radio today and there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. Um, it's called Chain Breaker. Okay, and it's a powerful song and I like that song except for the fact that um, it bothers me that sometimes we reduce God to he's going to fix everything. He's going to break every chain. He's going to fix every ailment. Everything's going to be great. And I'm like, okay, that's a facet of who God is, but that's not all who God is. And if we only buy into God is this, this heavenly um, uh, soda machine where we, we put in the coins and push a button and he gives us what we want, well, then we have a very shallow image of who God is. And so we're going to be looking at different ones. I'm also going to be sharing some songs uh, that, that you can hear on the radio. Um, and if we have, I'm, I'm, this is a disclaimer, if we have those songs available in acapella format, that's the direction that we will go. If it doesn't have it in acapella format, I'm going to play the song and I'm just going to ask you to pretend that you're listening to it as you would as if we weren't in a church building and it has musical instruments with it. I'm not pushing for us to go um, instrumental. Do I need to say that again? I can list 50 reasons why I do not want us to go instrumental. Okay, and, and none of them are salvation issues. Um, I am thankful that we have the song leaders that we have that are talented as they are to get up and lead songs. I can't imagine what a juggernaut it would be if we not only had to have a song leader, but then we would have a, a bass guitarist, a regular guitarist, a drummer. I don't know I, what other instruments you might want to play up there, the backup. I, I don't know, but that to me just makes my head explode thinking about that. So I'm not trying to say we need to have musical instruments. I'm just saying like, Let's not kid ourselves. You guys listen to music. Most of you do not. I don't know if any of you listen to like acapella rock music. I don't know that you listen to acapella country music. Okay. And so if you're going to be listening to music and it's going to have instruments with it, just me personally, I, I would encourage you to, to turn over to K-Love or any other place. Get your own uh, playlist and, and go from there. So. I, there, I've said it. I've been on my soapbox. I'm like, please, don't, don't go to the elders and say he's trying to get us to have musical instruments. I promise I'm not. Um, but if I'm going to listen to music, I want it to be stuff that really informs me of who God is. So we're almost out of time. Uh, but I, I, I want you to know that God understands this. He understands the importance of music. He created us to love music. You go through and you read the Psalms. Those are literally prayers and confessions that were put to music. And, and what scholars believe is that they were intended to be songs that were to be sung corporately or congregationally. That, that as David was writing some of these, these Psalms, it wasn't just like this journal. He was literally composing songs that people would sing. Um, and some of them were really tough. There are some psalms that if, if you were to listen to, it, it might really challenge you when he says, I can't wait for the day till, till the adversary comes and bashes the heads of your children against the rocks. And these are songs that are put to music. Um, I think music can really um, inform us. Um, I'm uh, in the early 2000s. A group came out called Casting Crowns. I don't know if any of you are familiar with them. Maybe you've listened to some of their music. 
Um, they really created a genre of music um, that's Christian, but it is very, very challenging. And we're going to look at a couple of those songs. Uh, they challenge the way church is church and what is church doing. Uh, one of the songs that they sing is Jesus Friend of Sinners, and we're going to listen to that song. Uh, and there's several different songs. Uh, uh, what if his people pray is one of the songs that, that they sing. And so they're really going to be some challenging songs. Um, the song uh, that Tim led today is one of my favorite songs. I don't know if you listen to the lyrics, but I, I do want to warn you. Please think about the lyrics as you're singing them. Um, I think we should be very careful about the praises that we lift up to God. And um, you might end up, you might have sang some things to God today that you might not want to say to him uh, without crossing your fingers. Um, one of the songs that Tim led today is one of my favorites, I Will Trust In You. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the waters, um, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give me answers when I cry out to you, what did you sing? I will trust in you. Boy, I mean, think about that. I mean, that's really, that's really tough. I don't know that I want to verbalize that to God, but that's what we did this morning. And to think about these songs. So we're going to be dissecting some songs. We're going to look at them. A few of them, we're going to look at the history. I know most of you are, are familiar with uh, Amazing Grace and um, uh, how how that song, um, what it was written and, and kind of look at the history of it. But I really want to focus in on what those songs are, are saying. God knows that, that, that this music that we are talking about, the Bible writers know about it. Early church fathers knew about it. And the multi-billion dollar music and advertisement industry know and capitalize on this. Music is important. I'm very proud of my heritage. I, I, will, I love acapella music. I love the sound of voices harmonizing. It, to me, is just so incredible. And, and I don't have a problem with with guitars and stuff like that. But man, if, I, if you want to say what's the most powerful songs, boy, just, just listening to people sing is really powerful. David puts prayers to music. Songs were written to tell stories, to remind, and to help commit truths to memory. Um, that was, it's almost a lost art. Uh, and really in the, the late 90s, um, church uh, or, or Christian songwriters went through a I don't want to say a rut but we we started they started putting out a lot of these praise songs um, and they called them 7-Eleven songs you know why they are called 7-Eleven songs I'm sure Tim knows right you, you sing the same seven words 11 different times <laughs> and so you kind of get out of that and that's why I love some of our older hymns because they're really great at telling these stories so in preparation to all this, uh, I, I started going through my songbook, and instead of singing the songs, I just treated it like a book, and I started reading it. And I'm going to ask you to do the same. We don't really use our songbooks. I haven't asked permission to do this, but hopefully I'll get a nod from the elders. I, I'm going to ask you, we're going to have a, a request time. And so you can request songs that we are going to discuss and so I want to encourage you, if you're not really sure, you can go borrow a songbook from the auditorium. Go through there. find, Pick out some songs that you think, hey, I would really like us to talk about. Maybe it's something, a song that you really like. Maybe there, it's a song that you struggle with. Maybe it's a song you don't understand. Maybe you want to know why we talk about uh, how, how we raise our Ebenezer. And what in the world does that mean? Uh, and so we'll do that. Throughout this study, we're going to invite guests to come up here and kind of dialogue. If you would like to join me, even if you want to pick out a song and say, hey, let's talk about your favorite song for just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to encourage people to do that. I've already tapped a few people on the shoulder and say, hey, let's, will you join me as we talk about songs and what they mean and then look at some specific songs. Uh, some examples of how music teaches um, is Psalm 51. 
And I think almost all of you know that song, even though you might not have ever tried to sit down and memorize it. Created me a, a clean heart, oh God. All right, and we can go through and talk about it. Boy, what a passionate song that was. And so starting on Wednesday nights, we're going to be introducing a song. I'm going to just to, hopefully to make you feel comfortable, we're going to start off with some, some old hymns, some that you know. Uh, and then occasionally we'll throw in one that's a little newer. But I want to encourage you to think of your own song. If you have, if there's a song that you listen to on the radio and you say, I really, I really want to talk about that song, please do it. I, I hope that maybe some of you, and I'm not judging, but some of you might consider flipping the radio station over to um, K-Love and, and listen to some of those. If you don't have any of that or you don't have a radio or whatever, and you're old school and you want some CDs, come talk to me. Um, I have a bunch of CDs. I have both acapella and just regular ones. Um, I think it would be really neat to go through that and just start listening to those. If you're already doing that, please think about the words and what the, what it means. So we're, we're just about out of time. Um, but here's, I'm gonna give you a, a playlist of some of the songs we're gonna be talking about. I don't, I don't have all of them. I have several pages. I'm not gonna go through all of them and we won't get to hit all of them. Uh, but the one I mentioned, uh, Jesus Freak. Uh, you are my king, uh, my savior and my God. Uh, praise you in this storm. These are some of the newer ones. I'll share some older ones. Even If is an awesome, awesome song. If you've not heard Even If, um, even if you don't. Um, it, it really kind of plays off the idea of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're, they're in the, um, thrown in the, the fire, but before they do, they said, you know, but even if you don't, I'm still going to worship you. No longer slaves. Blessed be your name. Um, uh, uh, Brett knows this because I request it all the time, how deep the Father's love. Um, if we are the body, 10,000 angels, a song that I love to hear, it's probably the hardest one to sing or lead, is I Can Only Imagine. And I don't know if I've told you lately, but like when it's time for me to go and, and we're celebrating the fact that I'm gone, I want that's the song I want. Uh, I Can Only Imagine. Jesus, friend of sinners, break my heart. Uh, a great one, old one, because he lives. Like that tells an amazing story. And there's some really good history about that, that the Gaithers. Uh, writing that song, Trust in You, How Great Is Our God, East to West, uh, What If, that's not even if, What If, is another good one, Mighty to Save, Step by Step, you, you don't have to listen on this one, babe, but what, we're going to do this, um, Our God, He is Alive, 728B, I know there's some people in here who don't really like that song, but we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, by nature song, if I'm ever out away from people and I'm just around nature, my go-to song, How Great Thou Art. A couple weeks back, I got to be alone on a mountain um, and I was sharing with Brett. I told him, he says, well, you know, we talk about this a lot. I said, well, I'm getting to go on my trip. And I, he said, well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to take the gospels with me and I'm taking a song book so I can, I can sing. And he literally said out loud, Oh, those poor animals. <laughs> so those animals got to hear me belt out, um, How Great Thou Art. Um, just a fantastic song. Wonderful Grace of Jesus, I Stand Amazed. Have you seen Jesus, my Lord? I love that song because when I was a teenager, we hung out with a group of kids who were from Plainview. He's here in Plainview. Come, come thou fount of every blessing. Uh, Thomas's song, which is a little bit of a newer one, but man, that's a great story. When I survey the wondrous cross, what a savior we saw thee not. Uh, when my love to Christ goes weak, uh, come share the Lord. I have a bunch of others we, we can't go through anymore, but um, I hope you come and, and join us and just be open-minded. Please be listening to music. Please request music. If you want to come up and, and dialogue with me for five minutes or the whole class. Um, we're going to be talking about um, what would your uh, Christian walkout song be? What song would you love to have sung at uh, your funeral? We're going to be looking at all those and just kind of open this up for conversation. So I'll, I'll hope you 
you'll join us for that on Wednesdays. Um, and then every, once a month, um, in, in three weeks from this coming Wednesday, we're still going to be doing our testimonials. And so we want to encourage you to be here for that. So uh, please keep uh, Frida Blackman in your prayers. Um, I know you guys are text savvy. So send her a text, please. Just blow up her phone. Uh, when we get done praying, if you have her number, I'm going to encourage you to send a text and just say we love you or whatever. And let her phone just ding all day long so she can be reminded of that. So let's close out in prayer and we'll be dismissed. Father God, I just I thank you for the many ways that, um, that you have created us uh, and given us opportunities to just be passionate about uh, loving and serving you. And one of the ways that happens is through music. And again, we it's uh, played uh, or it's it's done all throughout um, the Old and New Testament. We have these songs of of who you are, and, and they better inform us. And so I pray that as we come together on Sundays and Wednesdays, or we're out about, or we're jogging down the road wherever we are, and find ourselves listening to music, Lord, I just pray it'll be music that fills us with truth and love. Uh, in your spirit so that we can share it with other people. Lastly, Lord, I just, I want to lift up to you, uh, my friend, Frida Blackman. I love her dearly. Uh, she is just an amazing servant for you. And uh, right now she's, um, she's going through a tough time. And as her and her husband and, and her kids um, have held others up in their times of grief and sadness, uh, I pray that we will reciprocate and that, that we will do that for her and we will just overwhelm her, uh, that we will continue to go to your throne room and, and lift her up in prayers and that, that you and your angels will provide her comfort uh, in this difficult time. Lord, thank you again for this church family. I just, I love them so much. Thank you uh, that we could worship you this morning. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, you're dismissed.